Hi guys, welcome to Happy Visas. Uh, my name is Philip Port and today um, I'm going to be answering your questions about how easy or how difficult it is to find work in Russia. A lot of people interested in moving here. Um, you know, a lot of obviously because what's happened in the world, a lot of people have left. So there is a lot of jobs, for example, teaching English. Um, you know, if you're an engineer, there's a huge construction boom, a lot of jobs for engineers, working IT, a lot of internet technology jobs. But I'm going to focus on two areas. I'm going to be focusing on, you know, teaching English for a school, teaching English privately and teaching English online. So these are the three categories. And I'm going to be touching on a little bit about the cost of living. You know, you, you know, what are you going to need to survive? What type of salary? Uh, what can you know, what is the cost of living here, uh, especially in Moscow? So look, um, let's say you want to work online. Um, you arrive in Moscow, a uh, very good web website called Repetit. Uh, you upload all your details, you upload all your profile, you get the app. It is in Russian and they send you clients, you know, and you click accept. Um, you know, obviously many other people are clicking accept, but there is a shortage, shortage of expats at the moment. So uh, it's quite easy to get work now. I would go in there low at about two two thousand rubles uh, an hour, which is about twenty pounds an hour. Remember, you pay the first three, maybe three and a half lessons to repetit. So you work directly with the student. Uh, they send you the students. The students pay you, and then after seven days, you have to pay for the the the, the for for the introduction. Let's say that's one way. I like that way because you're working direct with the student. They're paying you. Because when you work for schools, they're notorious for paying late or not paying at all. So you've got to be very, very careful. If you go around Moscow banging on doors saying, look, give me a job, give me a job. Um, some schools are a little bit, you know, don't have a good reputation, pay late. Um, so you've got to be very, very careful there. But let's pretend you get a great school, a good school. There's still plenty out there. Um, they normally pay a little bit less. They're not the best payers. These are the private English schools. Um, so you, you could, you, you know, like you work online, you, 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 you know, you, you're earning 2,000 to 2,400 rubles an hour. If you work for a school, expect to earn about 2,000 rubles per hour. Now, um, they will give you jobs in companies, you go to companies, you sit in the office and you talk business or they might give you children, they send you to people's homes and, and you, you sit down with the children uh, having a conversation, maybe teaching them geography, history. Normally when they use expats, they already know all the grammar, so you, you don't have to teach them that, they, they normally speak good English because you're an expat, there's no point them hiring an expat and teaching them beginners, they've already learnt all of that. Now, let's say um, you want to work for a family full time. Um, there, there is quite a few jobs. You can find them on the Internet. Um, they call them governors or governess. And you will work full time for that family. And uh, you take the kids to school. You pick them up. Um, often you work two weeks on, two weeks off. Um, you, you know, you might have a, eight, a nine to five job. And you, you can earn quite well. You know, I, I would expect in pounds to earn about a thousand pounds a week. You, you know, you, you're looking at about four thousand pounds a month. A lot of jobs like that um, for wealthy Russians, if it's your cup of tea. Um, I personally couldn't teach children. Uh, the only child I'm teaching is my son. Um, I, it's not my cup of tea uh, uh, at all. So let, let's recap. You could work for the school. You could work online. Uh, you could work for a family. Uh, th these are the different approaches for teaching English. Um, you, you know, once you get established, you know, people are on five, six thousand rubles an hour, but you've got to get established, you've got to get the reviews up, you've got to get the contacts and, and things like that. But a lot of people do really, really well. And for those that can come here and for those that can get the proper documentation, like for example, the visas, um, a lot of a lot of expats have left, as I've already said. A lot of you know left the country. Um, so if you're prepared to work offline and and go to physical companies, go to people's houses and teach, 
uh, cha-ching, 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 doing very, very well uh, uh, at the moment. Now, <clears throat> what is the cost of living? A studio flat, half decent, near the centre, it's going to cost you about £400 a month, uh, something quite decent. Not big, just a studio, maybe 35 square metres. So if you're a single person or you, you, you're going with your partner, um, expect to pay about um, you, you know about four hundred pounds. But bear in mind, obviously, that's because the, the ruble is very weak. Uh, it's not good for your teaching, uh, actually, because you're paid in rubles. And if you need to buy dollars or pounds or euros, um, you, you know you're paying a horrible exchange rate. Uh, but I think that, you know the Russian economy, economy is booming at the moment. Three uh, percent unemployment. Everything is going well there. I think the ruble will recover. Famous last words, I've been predicting that for years and I've got it wrong virtually every time. Uh, so take that with a pinch of salt. But the fundamentals are there. The Russian economy is doing really, really well, um, despite ge the geopolitics, what, what's happening in the world. Um, when I say really well, low unemployment, everybody's got a job. Um, might not be the best paid job. A lot of international companies have left. So yeah, uh, you know, people who are shouting down the video, uh, you know, I've had to answer that before. So yeah, uh, let's get back to the original point. So the, <clears throat> so yeah, horrible exchange rate, uh, but it's quite easy to find a job teaching English. Expect to pay about 400 pounds for the flat, as I just said. You know, your food is slightly cheaper than, say, England or Europe, just a little bit cheaper, especially the fresh produce. But if you're in Moscow, there's lots of markets. I would call them organic. They, you, you taste the vitamins. I mean, it's got the best fruit and vegetables probably in the world. Um, they, you, you can taste the vitamins. In, in England, uh, the tomatoes and cucumbers are a little bit synthetic for me. Um, so food, a little bit cheaper in Moscow, not much, but very, very high quality. So accommodation, food. Now your metro system, uh, let's put it in comparison. If I had an all zone in the UK where I could travel anywhere on the metro system, believe it or not, that's eight and a half thousand pounds a year, um, about 10,000, 11,000 dollars. If I take an all zone in Moscow, which we don't have zones, you just buy one ticket, you go wherever you want, if I take a yearly ticket, um, I don't know what the prices are now. I haven't been to Moscow for a few years. I'm, I'm in Perm, but I am eventually going to go back. Um, you're looking at about £250 a year. Unlimited travel. That's the metro, the tramway, the electric buses. Um, very, very affordable logistics. You can pay a month, uh, a monthly ticket or you can buy a yearly ticket, but still extremely affordable compared to the United Kingdom. So you've got your pyramid of needs to teach. You've got your accommodation, you've got your food, you've got your transportation. Mobile and internet, expect to pay, pay about 10 pounds a month. I'm paying a thousand rubles, I have super fast internet, um, uh, unlimited calls, a um, thousand uh, rubles, maybe 1200 sometimes because I, 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 um, I don't know why, I, I click a button and sometimes I'm choice 200 rubles. Uh, so be careful, you know, if it says net or da, click net, uh, never click da because all of a sudden you get a couple of hundred rubles taken off. They always refund, <laughs> I always complain and uh, so I'll be very, very careful putting the phone in the pocket. They're always making these offers, happened to me a few times. Um, so yeah, uh, your mobile phone, fast internet, super fast internet. So you've got everything to start teaching. Um, a lot of good entertainment in Russia. Um, you know, expect to pay about four pounds for a good beer, 500 mil. Uh, that's the average price. You, you can get it for one pound 50. There's a lot of places for 150 rubles, one pound 50. Um, they might call them Gopnik bars. Uh, but yeah, um, beer is affordable. Restaurants, I'll say, in my opinion, about half price of England, about 50% cheaper. You can get a beautiful business lunch normally for four or five pounds, six dollars, and you'll get a, you know, for lunch, you'll get a, a, a starter, a salad, or maybe a soup, uh, and a main course, and maybe a little dessert, and, and, and a coffee, or maybe a small beer, and you're paying five or six pounds for that. Um, very affordable, 
business lunches. Um, in the evening, I just get a coupon. I, I go to Big Leon, thousands of restaurants on there that are offering, you know, between 30 and 50% discount. So I can get a huge discount eating out. There used to be a huge expat community, a huge expat community here, and we always used to meet up. I, I'd say that's down to about 40% now. We've all gone our different ways. I, as I said, I've gone to Perm. A lot of people left the country. Um, expat community is not as exciting as it was, say, four or five years ago. Um, <clears throat> used to be a wonderful, but I think that will all come back. Um, dentists are very cheap. Uh, to put it in perspective, I had, you know, I had two visits for dental treatment. I spent twenty pounds. I was I was in shock. That same treatment because I had an abscess. That same treatment would have probably cost me about six seven hundred pounds in England. Twenty pounds in perm. Dental treatment is affordable. So if you need your dental, don't do it in England. Wait till you get to Moscow if you're on your way. Um, so yeah, all of this and, and and it's a myth to say that hospitals are not very good in Russia. Hospitals, especially in Moscow. I've got a five-year-old boy, he's always got allergies, always got that, they treat you very good. Emergency services are very good. It's a very safe place to live, a uh, very, very safe place. So don't be scared about that. I've, t -t -t I, I, I've never personally had a, a problem where it wasn't my fault. Um, I've been punched one time, but that was me mouthing off and uh, me a little bit drunk, uh, having a good night out. Uh, it, it was a deserved punch that I got. <clears throat> Taught me a lesson never to mess with Russians, never do it again. So yeah, safest houses here. Um, I've never had a problem other than that one time. Um, yeah, great place to live, good standard of living, temping ball in billiards, good restaurants, beautiful parks, everything good. Um, I, I think it's the best kept secret in the world. Moscow is a great cosmopolitan city. Uh, I recommend anybody to come here and live and if you get that opportunity uh, grab it and very handsome men here very stunningly beautiful ladies here um, you know they, they take care of themselves they look after themselves um, very very nice people um, as well so yeah that's my take on Moscow that's my take on teaching English um, got any questions drop me a line I'll try to answer them thank you guys thank you very much